Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. The Effortless English Show. I'm A.J. Hogue. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Join my VIP program. You already know that. You can't just join. You have to commit. Commit. Become a member. Stay a member. Speak English fluently. Speak powerfully. Speak confidently. You speak English effortlessly. When you commit to my VIP program, just go to the website EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That's the home page. On the top, you'll see two choices. There's the Power English course, which is that main page. But you'll also see near the top that there'll be a link to the VIP program. EffortlessEnglishClub.com All right, we're going to talk today about recommended English listening and reading sites. And uh, actually, these are two video channels, and uh, I might even give you three video channels and a blog. So obviously, I listen to the videos, and I read the blog. Now, the blog, what's good is that the blog is actually pretty short, right? Like the, uh, the posts, the typical posts by the blog are actually quite short. There might be some tough vocab in these, okay? especially the blog, but it's short, so it's actually a good chance you can use a dictionary online, of course, and uh, learn some vocab, and uh, these are quite interesting. So these are all for native speakers. These are not for English learners, and I recommend you read things for native speakers and listen to native speakers when you can. Obviously, the listening part is more difficult for you, right? Reading, you can do slowly. You can use a dictionary. So reading something that's a little difficult, even for native speakers, if it's short, it's not too, too much of a problem, right? You can, you can maybe get their general idea and you get some new vocab. The video, it might be challenging. It just depends on your level. So you, you just, I just recommend try these video sites I mentioned. And I've mentioned some of these before, but I'm just going to gather them in one place so you can recommend them you can try them some might be quite challenging quite difficult for you at your level now that's okay just try if it's too difficult then don't worry about it just um but some maybe one of these channels you will like and will be understandable or understandable enough for you so that you can understand it and then you've got something else to listen to in english uh, for your English listening. And of course, you can listen to me. I should be much easier to understand. So I'm just going to recommend, um, I'll recommend, let's, I'll recommend actually, uh, yeah, let's go ahead with the blog first. Let's start with the blog. So blog is, you know, like for reading. So let's go to, I'll share my screen for those of you watching on video. And the first blog that I very much like. So these are all ones that I like, that I use myself. Okay? So this one's called Vox Pop Populi. From what? I think from the Greek is what he said, but uh, Greek or Latin. Vox Populi. I think it means uh, popular voice is what I'm guessing. Vox Populi. And um, this is a very, this is my favorite blog. It's the main blog I read every single day. And it has some things about American politics, if you're interested in that, about economics, about globalism and nationalism and what's happening in the world right now, uh, about the culture war happening in the world right now. It's really good. And the, the guy who uh, writes it is very, very, very intelligent. He's a Christian. Um for, yeah, really just great. I I always get great information. He's also very good at keeping up morale, meaning that for good people, he helps you to keep your morale, keep your confidence high, right? So, so many sites, so many alternative news sites or blogs or something, 
they're just it's just all negative 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 it's all just you know oh everything's terrible antifa is doing this and the the crazy left wing is doing this and oh it's horrible and it's just it's just uh just you know negative 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 cry 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 and i don't like that i don't like it at all it's not good for you it's weak so what I like about Vox Populi, Populi, I don't know how to pronounce it, Vox Populi, is that it's uh, the opposite of that. He gives you strength. He gives you courage to fight to, for truth and beauty and goodness. So he will not just cry and cry and whine. It, quite the opposite. Uh, so you can get, a very, get some very interesting uh, ideas about what's happening in the world. He's also very accurate when he predicts something, when he describes something. Many, many, he's usually right, I find. And how do you know he's right? Well, you wait a few months or a few years and you see. And he's right. Most people on TV, they're wrong 90% of the time. When they predict something or when they analyze something in the, in happening in the news, happening in the world, they're almost always wrong. But they keep their job and they just keep, they're wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong and wrong. Like the guys on CNN, they're always wrong. Even the people on Fox are almost always wrong. It doesn't matter, right? Uh, and a lot of people online, wrong, wrong, wrong. But this guy has a very good record of being correct. If he predicts something or if he analyzes something or he thinks something, uh, I find that almost always, even if it sounds a little strange or crazy, that a few months later, oh, he was right again. So that's a good reason to read this. And it's very, just very interesting if you, it's intellectually interesting, this blog. So, and you'll get some nice, um, you know, you'll get some current events, some of you like that, but without all the lies from the fake news. And finally, some vocabulary. So, what's, it's, I've mentioned this guy's blog many times, but let's just, I'll show you up here. It's voxday.blogspot.com. I'll put it on my screen for a minute. Let's see. Uh, here we go. I just need to... Just give me a second. Uh, I think I need to add it. Yep. Okay. Let's see. So it's uh, voxday.blog blogspot.com and I'll just put it above my, you see my gab on the screen. Well, now you can see his uh, blog, voxday.blogspot.com. I read it every day. And uh, you could probably see if you're watching on video that the posts are very short. So it's pretty easy for, it's good little reading practice for you. Um, if you're going to read something that's a little difficult, not all, some of you, some, some will be very easy for you, I think. But some might be difficult, depends on the topic. But uh, keep it short so it's no, it's no problem voxday.blogspot.com there you go right on the screen okay let's go now to some uh I'll do another one that I've, you guys will know, this one, obviously. Uh, the next one will go to the video channel, YouTube channel. And uh, it's our friend Snake Diet. So I just want to show you his channel. No surprise, I'm recommending him, especially now during our challenge. This is a video I'm watching him right now. So it's YouTube.com. And the channel is Snake Diet. Like snake, like the animal, diet, D-I-E-T, -E -E all together, Snake Diet. YouTube.com Snake Diet. He's also on BitChute, in case they try to ban him on YouTube. And uh, he's back. He's making videos. He's got one here. How I lost weight, how I lose weight, eating 5,000 calories a day. So Cole, is, he's right now, of course, fasting is great. Fasting, fasting, fasting. But some of you are wondering, like, how to lose weight and be active or how to raise, how to increase your metabolism, right, your energy level. Uh, or build muscle and now he's really focusing on that so these he's got some good videos now that you can watch about those topics and this like here he's talking about what he's doing now he's not sitting 
all day long, no sitting, zero, zero sitting. He's standing, moving all day. So 16 hours a day, he's standing and moving his body constantly. He talks about how just sitting on your butt, like I'm doing right now, is very, 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 very unhealthy. And by just being active all day, you will burn lots and lots of fat, lots and lots of calories, and also just great for your health. And you don't need to do, you know, in this video he's showing, you don't need to do anything uh, super intense, right? Super difficult. Just walk, stand, move your body. In this video, he's boxing, but he's going very, very light. He's not, he's hitting a bag, but it's, if you watch the video, you see it's very slow. He's doing it. Let's see, I guess I can play the video. Let's see. So between the, I don't know if you can see my shoes, but I have my runners okay, see, on. He's right just kind of jogging around today. a little bit. He's barely hitting it. Very, very, very soft, but he's doing it for one hour. So what he's saying is you just stay active and do lots of activity all day long, but just kind of, kind of fairly soft activity. But don't sit down. Don't be lazy. And you do this and you can lose fat a lot and just in general get your fitness higher. And of course, for, for building muscle, you're going to have to lose weight. But I just recommend this, you know, I'm going to recommend it again. Snake Diet YouTube channel. Snake Diet. Let's see if he's got his website. Back. He may just have made it private now. I don't know. It's private. I don't know why. He, d he didn't mention it, so I don't know. Anyway... YouTuber bit shoot snake diet highly 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 recommended All right, let's go to our next video channel that I recommend for you all that I like And that is a crazy man and a crazy in a good way Owen Benjamin now Owen Benjamin does a lot of conspiracy theory stuff So if you like that quote conspiracy theory, I don't even like that phrase because uh, let's Let's be honest. Most of these conspiracies, they're coming true, right? Things I remember 10 years ago, people were saying things that supposedly were crazy. That everyone said, that's a conspiracy theory. And guess what? Now we're finding out, oh, that was true. Oh, that was true. Oh, that was true. So conspiracy theories, I'm open to them now. I, even the ones that seem crazy, I will listen and I will think about them. I don't immediately say, oh, of course it's true. You need evidence, of course. But I like to listen to people who are not afraid to challenge common thinking. Because the truth is, we have been lied to. The media, our schools, the history books, science, all lying, lying, lying to us. They have lied to us about so many things that... We really have to keep our minds open about everything, about everything, right? Unless you have direct experience for something, don't just accept it. Just because you learned it in school, it means nothing. There's a very good chance if you learned it in school that it's a lie. Even if it was, you know, so-called science, definitely with history uh, and historical events, including recent ones, we can't trust any of that now. So we have to stay open-minded. Right. It, it does not mean you immediately believe everything. That's called being gullible in English. To be gullible means you just accept, you just believe anything without thinking. No, we don't want that. But on the other hand, we should question everything that we were taught in school. Everything and question everything. The media is always lying. We know that the media, it's 100 percent lies. Schools, uh, I don't know, but it's a lot. We've lied. They lied to us about history. They've lied to us about so many things that we have. It's good to keep your mind open. And I like to listen to people who are thinking and and questioning all the time about everything. And sometimes with really crazy ideas. But sometimes those crazy ideas are wrong. But a lot of times they're they're right or they're you know half right. So Owen's like that. He's a comedian. He was kicked out of Hollywood. Why? Uh, they won't give him a job anymore. Uh, why? Because he, he criticized the transgender movement, insanity, craziness. He, he said it's evil to give children hormones and chemicals to make them into the other sex. It is evil. He's right. But uh, in Hollywood, you can't. Hollywood is full of these crazy people. 
So someone who says speaks the truth cannot get a job in Hollywood. So he's out. He was out. So now he lives on a farm and up in uh, Washington State with his two children. I think another child coming. And he does live streaming and he kind of makes money this way. And he's got a career. He's very, very, very interesting. And he talks about all kinds of interesting stuff. So I recommend that you check him out. So where is he? Actually, no, I'm not going to try. He's on DLive, but let me recommend a different channel for him. It's uh, Infogalactic. An off. He talks about the moon landing and how that may not be true, may be faked. Uh, he talks about all kinds of interesting stuff. Very interesting. All right, so let's do unauthorized TV. So here it is. It says you're going to get a thing that says not secure, that the website's not secure. Don't worry about it. It's a safe site. Their work, they just got to get their security certificate. But you can trust it. I've been on there. There's no, nothing's going to happen. It's UATV, UATV, and again, I'll, I'll put this on the screen, dot infogalactic.com. Let me just put it on our screen. And it's got a lot of good stuff on there, a lot of good video. Owen Benjamin is my is probably my favorite for video, although... Box Day has a good one. The dark stream on that channel is also excellent. Um, but it's got some other cool stuff, too, if you're interested in, in it. All right, let me just put this one on my screen as well. Okay, so for those of you only listening, I'll read it. But if, if you're watching online, you can uh, see it on the screen. Okay, just banning some people. Okay, here we go. So it's UATV, just the letters UA. It stands for unauthorized TV, but it's UATV dot infogalactic. Info is I-N-F-O, like information. Galactic, like galaxy. G-A-L-A-C-T-I-C dot com. So UATV dot infogalactic dot com. It's interesting. It's it's an interesting, uh, a very interesting website. You can watch some of the video. Most of the videos are, you can watch for free if you want to support them. You know, it's nice, uh, you know, get one of their uh, subscriptions. They're not expensive. All right, so that's it, guys. That's th- those are my recommendations. I think that's enough. Those are ones, and again, I'm recommending ones that I personally like. So th- these are ones that I listen to or I read. So I can definitely recommend them. Uh, and they're not, what I like is they're not for English learners only. Um, you know, this, obviously my podcast, my show is for English learners. And uh, I try to make it interesting. I don't talk about the English language all the time. I almost never talk about the English language because it's boring and it doesn't help. Uh, but let's be honest, most English learning sites on YouTube or or blogs or whatever are super, 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 super boring because <laughs> they all they talk about is grammar and vocab and the English language itself, which is incredibly boring. So these are not boring. Again, you might some of them might be difficult for you, some might be easy for you, but just try them out. I can say at least at the very least they're not boring. Definitely not boring. They're very interesting. All these channels and the blog. Very, very interesting. And therefore, native speakers. So if you understand them, you're getting real native speakers. They're all, let me think. Uh, they're Cole Robinson's Canadian, and the others are Amer- American. Yeah. Canadians, Cole Robinson does not really have much of a Canadian accent, meaning he's got that typical North American accent. It sounds, it's basically the same as America. America, the American and the Canadian accent are basically the same. There are some people with Canadian accents who have a little bit of it where they make this kind of a ooh sound. Like the the example everyone always says is about. So an American will say about. And a Can, some Canadians will say about. Instead of ow, they say oh. Right? We say, Americans say about. Right? It's about 
10 o'clock. But some, not all, but some Canadians will say a boat. It's a boat 10 o'clock. So that it's a very, very, very tiny differences. But basically, Canadians sound and Americans sound very, 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 very close. Their accent, super close. Basically, it's the same accent, more or less. So you should have no problem with Cole, except that he, when he's talking fast. All right, let's get into comments and questions now. And if any of you have uh, in other cool English uh, uh, websites or channels or blogs that you read that you recommend, then please uh, put them in the comments. And I, uh, I prefer ones that are not for English learners because those are too boring. So just like ones for native speakers. But, you know, we know some native speakers are very hard to understand. Some are easier. So just let me know if you have suggestions, too. All right, let me get into the comments and questions now. Trung Min says, the BBC and CNN are famous in some countries, but they lie to people. Yeah, they're both garbage. Do not listen to CNN. Do not listen to the BBC. You're just, you're filling your mind with lies, garbage, fear. Ugh, you're, you're, you're hurting yourself if you listen to that. Uh, Tungmin says, so the recommended site of Vox Populi is a good way to learn English. We can gain news about such current events. Yep. <laughs> Abraham says, I watched Cole's latest video. It was cool. I like him, but it's not a good idea to learn English from him. Well, yes and no. It's really good for your listening, actually. The way he, he talks, uh, you, know, you know, like in a casual, not just casual, very almost rude way. But a lot of people talk that way. There are a lot of people who talk that way. So um, if you only listen to very polite people, even like me, I'm pretty polite, pretty calm the way I talk. Uh, that's fine. That's good. It, it's most helpful. But it, it is also helpful to listen to someone like Cole because like on the street, if you're in an American city, uh, you're going to meet people like him. He's exaggerated. He's, he's exaggerating as a, to perf as a performance for his video. But, um, but there are people who talk basically like that, who say, fuck shit, fuck, 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 fuck. They say that all the time. A lot of people do talk like that. And it's good practice, actually. Vladislav says, is it possible to, to, to not sit for 16 hours a day? It's certainly possible. He's doing it. Um, I'm going to try to sit less is my goal. I think it's a good point he's making. Obviously, I'm sitting now. Maybe I'll, I don't know. I guess I could do my show standing up. Hmm. We'll see. I might try it. Irena says, what do you recommend listening to? in English for beginners, someone who speaks like you. Um, oh, there used to be one, but they stopped doing their podcast. Uh, da, 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 da. I think beginners really, to be quite honest, I think that something like a podcast, a native speaker just talking full speed is too hard for beginners. I think beginners need to start with mini stories. Honest, that's what they need to do. Uh, they, they should get my Power English course or my original course. They should focus especially on the point of view stories and the mini stories. They're really not ready. They're not ready even for me now listening to this podcast, right? I'm pretty easy to understand. I'm not a fast speaker. I don't use a lot of slang. But still, for a beginner, it's too much. So I think for a beginner, yeah, it, it's for listening, they really should focus mostly on... Uh, Mini stories, point of view stories, maybe some very easy audiobooks. But trying to listen to YouTube videos and stuff, I think is too hard for a beginner. Gaga Karima says, I'm trying to lose weight by fasting all day. Me too. I'm fasting again today. With a little activity, dancing. Okay, good. This is effortless losing weight. 
Yeah, exactly. Light activity. When you're when you're fasting to lose weight, you don't want to go to the gym and do a super hard workout, okay? Cuz your energy's too low. Your blood sugar, your your muscle sugar actually, the glycogen, the the sugar basically in your muscles is dropping and in your liver is dropping. You don't have the energy to do a super hard workout, but you have plenty of energy for light things. Dancing, walking, riding a bike, swimming, uh, like Cole's doing, very lightweight, hitting a bag, like boxing. All these things are fine. Kind of very light, moderate types of activity that you can do for a long, long, long time, for hours and hours. That's great for losing fat uh, as you're fasting. Like today, I walked again with my baby and just kind of just played at the park and just basically... Tice Fokina says, Vox Populi is pronounced in Latin. Okay, thank you. Evan Carmichael, Saeed Ramadan with a recommendation. Incredible channel on YouTube. Check it out. Helps me a lot. Improve my English. Motivates me at the same time. Okay, good. Yeah, Jacques So said, I just checked out Snake Diet. He sounds like an insane person. <laughs> he's a little crazy. I, what, right? He's like an army. If you've seen movies like what, about the army, right? The tra- they're training the soldiers. There's the, the guy is called the drill sergeant. The drill sergeant. He's the one that's always screaming and yelling at the, the new soldiers. That's what Cole's like. He's like that guy. Okay, Hadi says, I listen to TED Talks usually to improve my English listening skill. Yep, not bad. They're usually fairly simple. Ooh. Sorry. Um, sometimes this YouTube comments just jumps and I lose it. Um, all right, I'm just going to go to the bottom. It's easier. I'll go back up. Hmm. Oh, AJ, Sarah says, how many kilos did you lose in three days? Um, I'm still not sure. I'm going to wait. Right now, it's showing that I lost about three kilograms in three days, but there's no way. Absolutely, there's no way that's fat. <laughs> okay, so that's water. A lot of it's water. I'm guessing maybe I lost one kilogram of fat, maybe, and uh, and then most of, and then the rest is water. So I don't really want to measure my water loss. Uh, I'm not going to put it on the website. So I'm waiting until my the water kind of balances out from fasting. I'm not going to put it on the the challenge runner website yet three kilograms because I know it's going to go back up again. So right now I'm at 76, but I know it'll bounce back up. So I'm just going to wait and see, and then I'll enter my uh, weight loss amount. But basically I'm doing 48 hour fast. I'm eating one time every two days. I finished one. uh, So I ate last night. Today I did not eat. I'll eat tomorrow night. Leonardo Parigi says, I'd like to start reading Vox Populis posts. Is it a good idea to read the same posts for two days or more for deep learning? You could, but they're so short that you could, yeah, you could go back and review them and then continue and also read the day, you know, like each day review from yesterday and then read today's review yesterday's read today's review yesterday's read today's. You could do that because they're all very short. Jack so says, if native speakers didn't slur, didn't blend, put together their words, 
in daily conversation, it would be better to understand. Well, it would, but they do. <laughs> they do, not just in English. So, uh, yeah, we have to deal with the real English, not not some um, some textbook English we want. We have to deal with the real thing. English with Mayores says, if I come to America, can I meet you? Probably not, because I'm not in America. <laughs> if you come to Osaka, Japan, you can meet me. <laughs> AJ, you can do the live show while standing, Ibrahim Ali said. Yeah, exactly. I'm going to do the live show next one. Maybe the left next one, I'll do standing up. I just have to adjust my camera and my lights. But uh, yeah, it's not a bad idea. Namaz says, I recommend the self-growth program at oh, Mind Valley uh, by Vishen Lakhiani. Yeah, I think I've checked out that site before. Rahim says, your accent is really clear. Thank you. Oh, okay, Pablo Robles says, um, I, I watch uh, Dr. Eric Berg's DC channel on YouTube. Good nutrition and fasting information. Complimenting Cole Robinson. Nice. Sounds good. I might check him out. Bidoya Magzim says, I follow St Dr. Steve Turley. I've heard of him. He exposes the left-wing socialist hypocrisy. Nice. Sounds good. English with Mayor again says, I didn't know anything about English. Now I'm an English teacher. I learned everything from you. I will buy your package. I learned everything. Great. From, from your free videos. Cool. That's nice. See, you can just, you can learn a lot from these podcasts. Oh, Ilana Khan says, I put on Gab a link to an interesting article, Fasting for Health and Longevity, Nobel Prize winning research on cell aging. I'll look that. I'll look for that on Gab. Saeed Ramadan says, 21 Studio is a wonderful channel on YouTube. Okay. Muhammad Lalim says, do you have your own Facebook account? Effortless English is my Facebook account, but don't subscribe to it. I'm not really using it anymore. I'm, I'm leaving. I'm very inactive on Facebook. My personal Facebook, I just post nonsense now. What do you think about Jordan Peterson? I'm not a fan. He's a, he's a drug addict. <laughs> so... Not a fan. <laughs> oh, this sounds interesting. Vladislav says, I also like the channel Coach Red Pill. The channel's owner has another channel, Gonzalo Lira. He talks about life, relationship, and politics. Hmm. Well, I'll have to check that out. Coach Red Pill. Coach Red Pill. I'll try to remember that. You guys, if you have these, by the way, if you're on Gab, post these links on Gab if you would. And uh, message, you know, put my name in the Gab. When you post it, put at AJ Hogue, you know, so I'll see it. Uh, I'll check out some of these. Oh, Namaz says, I really love all these sites. UATV. And snake diet are the most great ones. Thanks. Really helps. Good. Good. And he says, I like snake diet channel. He's always shouting. Sometimes I think I'm in a protest. <laughs> yeah, or the army. <laughs> I like it. So I know some of you guys, oh, I don't like it. He yells too much. But I like it. I like his, uh, I like his, just don't take it so seriously. I think some people take it too seriously. And uh, he's at the, Laugh about it and enjoy it because he's he's trying to kick you in the butt and make you lose weight and be healthy. 
like a like a sergeant in the army, right? That's his purpose. Cool. So uh, I can't read the acrylic, but it says, uh, AJ, I've been watching Effortless English for about one year. It was like a bridge where I can enter to the English world. Now I can understand native speakers without difficulty. Thank you. That is a very good description of my podcast, of my show. That is a very, very good description, a bridge. That is exactly what I'm doing. Uh, you know, as a teacher, as a coach, that's exactly what I'm trying to do with this show. So I'm glad it worked. Good job. Okay, a couple more. Do I agree with learning two languages at the same time? Yeah, sure. If you want to, if you have time, go ahead. Wow, the comments are coming in fast today. Which is better to live, USA or Japan? Japan's a more peaceful, safe, um, unified uh, country, which is why I'm here. Well, I'm here because my wife is Japanese, but um, I, I prefer Japan right now. AJ, it would be great to make a show about Japanese culture. Yeah, says Flavio Aquino. I know I should do. I've done it with some of my audio podcasts where I've talked about it. Um, yeah, Japan's really interesting. Just, of course, I'm a, I'm a guest. I'm a foreigner. I always will be. So, but, you know, maybe from a foreigner, from an American point of view, some, I, you know, talk about some of how I see some Japanese culture. It might be kind of fun sometimes. It'd be more fun, I think, if I went out with a camera and showed things, right? Not just sitting here talking to you. Um, you know, maybe as my babies get a bit older, I can do some of that. Like there's just there's some nice temples. There's some Japan's great, really cool stuff about Japanese culture. Sarhan says, what's the difference between the British and American accent? I can't. I don't know. Just listen. <laughs> you'll hear the difference I, I can't give you a bunch of rules uh, about it I don't even know um, but obviously if I hear it I know it just learn it by ear don't don't try to memorize rules about accents and stuff you'll never remember it Um, Rami says, what, what are your perspectives about fasting as, as a fat loss solution? You must be new. <laughs> uh, I'm fasting right now to lose weight. Uh, it's, it's the best way. There, it, you just think about it logically. The fastest possible way to lose fat is fasting. I guess the fastest possible way is fasting plus exercise. Right. If you exercise while you're fasting, of course, you will increase the speed of weight loss, fat loss, um, even more. But essentially, if we're just talking about food, fasting is the best. You're not eating anything. You're eating zero. You reduce your calories to zero. You can't go lower than that. So, yes, I and also and and the truth is, like for me, like I don't want to waste. I've tried. Um, I can, from my own experience, and then also looking at family members or other people, it's the most effective. It's the actually the easiest way to lose weight. And of course, when I say lose weight, of course, I'm always saying I'm, I always mean fat, right? I don't want you don't want to lose muscle, but um, to lose fat, the it's 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 the fastest way, and because of that, I think it's it's the easiest. Because when you see the results happening so fast, it's very, very, very motivating, right? When you step on a scale after two days and you're like, whoa, I lost a kilogram, right? Any other diet, like if you just say, if you just try to reduce things, I'm going to reduce my calories, I'm going to reduce my carbs, I'm going to reduce, right, lower. Um, some of those things might work, 
they're much slower and they can because of that um the motivation is often less right because after two days there's no difference nothing changed right you you get on the scale oh i still weigh the same it's kind of unmotivating right or you go a whole week and you only lost a tiny amount and it feels like oh it's gonna be forever and it can be easy to break those kinds of diets for that reason just psychological reasons but for fasting i find it's so motivating because two days i lose a kilogram whoa that's you know like, ah keep going right because you you realize like for me i can lose all the weight i need in two or three weeks i'm saying three weeks but that's being very conservative that's being probably if i if i'm aggressive about exercising more like not sitting down if i try that and i think i will uh and just burns a, just increase my calorie burning a bit while i fast probably I can drop all the weight I need in only two weeks. It's very motivating. It feels good too. When, once you get used to it, like the first couple fasts, maybe the first two days or the first four days of fasting, um, you might feel bad, right? Tired and your body's changing to burning fat, getting used to fasting. Sometimes it's not fun in the, the first couple times. But after that, your body adjusts, it changes, and you start burning fat very effectively, efficiently. Your mind becomes very clear. It's a very nice feeling, right? And you have this kind of, your energy will be lower as you fast, but it's not, it won't crash, right? And you just feel this kind of very calm, peaceful feeling. This is why, you know, many different religions and religious teachers recommend fasting it because it produces it helps to produce a much more peaceful calm mind and emotions it's, it has a spiritual and mental benefit also and it, it, it will it starts to feel good not the first time okay if you've never done it before well even if you just if you don't do it for a while it can be hard now, for me, actually, this I'm surprised because yesterday's fasting and then this now, it's actually been pretty easy for me. I guess my body still has some, has adjusted to it, even from doing it last year. Uh, but someone totally new to fasting might find it tough the first few days. My recommendation, if, if you're new to fasting, do a three-day fast, so 72 hours, and... Uh, after that, your body should adjust pretty well. All right, comments are jumping around again. One second. Cool. Pablo says, I'm still fasting since 21st of June. I've lost 3.8 kilograms already. Yeah, see, so you just get these great results. It's so motivating. So motivating. I only... Uh, ups... Abdullah says, I only fast in the month of Ramadan. Food is unavoidable for me. <laughs> you should try fasting more. What do you think about enemas? Have you tried? Ask Ruslan. I have done them in the past, not, but not, well, no, not as really, not really as part of fasting. I find that if I'm doing the snake juice, you know, the salt and potassium water, that I feel fine. I think the, the enemas are supposed to help you detox, get rid of toxins, and uh, make the fasting a bit easier. That's what I've heard, read. Uh, but I find that the fasting is pretty easy if I just drink water with salt and potassium. So I don't really find it necessary. But uh, I think it probably it might. There's not. I don't think it would hurt you, and it might have benefits. Give it a try. Yeah, Ruslan's uh, another comment says dry fasting with a 10 kilometer walk is very effective. Yeah, that's a great idea. 10 kilometers is six miles. Uh, so it's about two hours of walking while dry fasting, meaning you're not you cut water. If you're new to fasting, just do this, the, the water with the salt and potassium. It's called it's called snake juice. <laughs> do that. But if after you do some of that fasting, Try dry fasting if you like. You don't have to, but dry fasting. I find like 24 hours of dry fasting is is surprisingly easy uh, after I've done water fasting. 
you know, so my body gets used to it. Af more than 24 hours, it can get kind of hard. But Diego says, P George and Peterson is a drug addict. Oh, my God. Yeah, he went to drug. He had to go to a drug. Uh, he may still be there. He's in a drug rehab. He's in a, you know, like a clinic to recover from drug addiction. <laughs> so which drug? I think uh, a lot of people guess, trying to guess. I don't think he said exactly. But yeah, he's a drug addict. I'm not being funny. He really is a drug addict. Namaz, how's your Spanish? Yeah. Right now, it's pretty so-so. Zobade says, I like humans of New York dot com for reading. Never heard of it. Sounds interesting. Do I prefer the American accent or British accent? Take a guess. <laughs> uh, Ahmed says, I'm dreaming of inviting you to Egypt someday. That would be nice. I'd love to go. I'm very fascinated by the pyramids in ancient Egypt, especially. It'd be cool to see them. Okay, Mehdi Faraji says, there's a funny truther called Paul. His YouTube channel is The Pockets of the Future. The Pockets of the Future, YouTube. He's hilarious. His orientation is like you, AJ. Homesteading, meditation, other positive stuff. Nice. I have to check that out. Pockets of the Future, Red Pill Coach. Do you know the channel uh, Plotina, Plotina Phil says, do you know the channel Abroad in Japan? I don't. Check it out. Abroad in. There you go. That must be popular. Uh, I guess it is. 1.6 million uh, people. A British guy making videos in Japan. Okay. Oh, sorry. There you go. If some of you guys are interested in Japanese culture, you want to hear... Uh, native uh, English speaker talk about Japan uh, this guy's probably d doing much better than I would do because this is his whole focus daily life in Japan was teaching English in Japan really like <laughs> if you're in a school it sucks <laughs> uh, anime Japanese nightlife. See, a lot of these guys that are teaching English in Japan, they're younger, and they're really into partying and life and drinking and all that. I'm not, but uh, but if, if, if you're interested in that, you can check it out. Capsule Hotel, those are funny. I've stayed in one of those. Those are kind of cool. I like them. I like the Capsule Hotels. Because I'm trying to actually share my screen. So it's called Abroad in Japan. Oh, he went to Okinawa. Why are people so healthy in Japan? I'm just reading the titles. Living with sumo wrestlers for a day. 10,000 calorie diet. Wow. Yeah, this looks interesting. I mean, I'll have to listen to it. See what it, I don't know what his personality's like. Let's listen to it. Let me give, I'll give you an opinion about his English. Uh, let's pick, a, pick one. 12 things not to do in Japan. Okay. Leave a tip as well. I won't lie, I didn't know a whole lot about Japan before I got here. Uh, I knew what Pikachu was, and I'd seen The Last Samurai about three times. Okay, a little bit of a heavy English accent, but he's got sub uh, he's got the subtitles at the bottom of the screen, so that's good. That was probably the extent of my knowledge. I actually did most of my reading about Japanese etiquette on the horrific 12-hour flight between London and Tokyo, and I've pretty much just winged it ever since. In high Okay, it seems like, yeah, his English is fine. It's clear. British, very British. So some of you guys want British and you're interested in Japan. There you go. Abroad in Japan. All right, a couple more and then my wife needs to go to bed. So I need to go take care of babies. He's British accent. Yes. 
Kumi Pong says, I take medicine every day. Should I not fast? I'm not a doctor, so I cannot tell you that. I have no, uh, it depends what you're, it depends which medicine you're taking, why you're taking it, what it is. Would fasting affect it? Because fasting might drop your blood sugar a bit. Um, you know, like, are you supposed to take that medicine always with food? You, you'd have to talk to a doctor about that. I don't know. I'm guessing some medicines, no problem. You can take them with with while fasting is no problem. And others, might there might be a problem. I, I'm not sure. So you, you just need to have to research that yourself. Uh, AJ, do you have enough time to learn Japanese language with two kids to take care of? Asked Leonardo Parigi. No, not in uh, probably one year. T for about a year, a little less than a year, about 10 months, I have not done Japanese. I've been way too busy with twin babies. <laughs> Uh, hopefully get back to it. We'll see. I, you know, I try to chat a little bit with people in the neighborhood. Very ba basic, simple stuff, but it's enough. Enough for me at the moment. Ah, cool. I always like to promote the Camino. Jaffer says, I talked to someone who walked the Camino de Santiago, de Santiago in Spanish. He said it was amazing. He did it with his wife. It is amazing. It's fantastic. The Camino de Santiago in Spain. Um, means the way of Santiago is a pilgrimage. It's fantastic, amazing, incredible, wonderful. If you ever have a chance to do it, I highly, highly, highly recommend doing that uh, pilgrimage. It takes, it took, well, actual days from when we started to if we finished was 32 days for my friend and I, Joe and I. Uh, of course, you need a few days before you know you have to fly into Spain and, and you have to get to the town to start and then a few days after probably um, but and if you walk more slowly we walked a little fast um, but we also took some days off so I don't know that that's probably pretty close to average probably 32 days you could do it maybe a little faster if you didn't take breaks and but a lot of people do it more slowly anyway just research it camino de santiago d i guess is what italian or portuguese maybe philip lao welcome to basic oh nice i should check do we have I forgot that i have the youtube channel and i appreciate you guys supporting that thank you Ruslan says it's time to make more kids, AJ. <laughs> I, I, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> Still not getting enough sleep. Uh, getting an, uh, Abu, Abu, Abu Bakr is also inviting me to uh, Egypt. Someday I'd love to go actually take the kids to Egypt and we could study Egypt. You know, Egyptian history is absolutely fascinating. Super amazing. Um, yeah, it would be fun. I mean, talk about ancient culture and you know, wow. Fasting means don't eat food. Edith Rios asks, fasting means don't eat. It's avoiding food, like not eat for one day or two days or three days. No food. And I was saying, have you ever traveled to North Africa? I've never been to Africa at all. Not north, nowhere in Africa. Uh, so no, I've never been to Egypt. I've never been to Morocco. Uh, no. So someday, we'll see. Sine says, are you going to stay in Japan the rest of your life? Maybe. Probably, in, probably will raise the children here. I think it's a better place to raise children. Okay, one more and then I got to go. Tunisia as well. Nice. Okay. Uh, Abdullah giving his view on the accents. Uh, some people say they prefer British accent, but it's not as clear as American. They tend to mumble a lot. It does, to an American, it does sound a little mumbly to me. That's the first thing I thought when I heard him speaking, but it's not so bad. It's just a little bit. It does sound that way. 
Um, but, you know, obviously I'm American, so this is my uh, viewpoint. But British, uh, you know, these are the two most common, popular English accents in the world. English meaning English language accents in the world, obviously. I would say probably American. North, we should say North American because it does include Canada. Um, the North American is no doubt number one just because of the huge amount of media that comes out of the United States. So I would put that in. The United States is a bigger country, especially if you add Canada, there's a much bigger population. And the British, the standard British, like that guy was speaking, would be the second most common. And you still have that British accent is popular. I've noticed in some of the the former, the the old British colonies, like Malaysia. Where else? Mm, definitely Malaysia. I don't know. I'm trying to think where else. Maybe Singapore, maybe, uh, where they seem like they prefer the British. India. Although India, I don't know now, because India economically now is of course their their history is more tied to britain and to england uh obviously but but now there's so much of their business is connected to the usa where they are uh doing call centers and software and tech support and all of this so uh, i think more recently indians a lot of the indians that I know that I've meaning I've read about, not personally, but um, they seem like they're more focused on American English. It doesn't matter. Learn them both. Listen to them both. Doesn't matter. They're both fine. All right, guys, that's all for now. We'll see. Okay, my, my challenge will be the next show to do standing. Remind me on Gab. Next time, if if the next live show, if you see me sitting, remind me that I should stand. All right. Hope you are losing weight, getting healthy. Uh, I hope you enjoy the blog and the video channels I recommended. Let me know. Talk to me on Gab. See you next time. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. EffortlessEnglishClub.com.